Bassacast. Um, today you join me on the canal side. Um, it's my first um, fishing session of the October to March season. Um, you'll see in the background there, there's a few stationary boats and it's always a good place to start. If you do see any boats parked up or moored in, if you like, um, that's where you'll find pike just sitting underneath there. Just in the dark shadows, just waiting for a, a prey fish to come by, whether it's a small perch or a small roach. Um, this is not the peg that I'm going to be fishing in um, this afternoon, but um, as I say, I'll always have a look and I may come back to it later. Hi again. Um, just wanted to have a look at a couple of these features here. We were talking earlier about the boats being um, a good man-made feature. Um, just a little bit of watercraft, if you just look where that bridge is there, always a good favourite of mine. Bridges, darkness, we were talking about shadows, Pike just like to lurk in the dark areas um, for, for the element of surprise. But if you just look at where the, um, the towpath actually cuts in there, sometimes you'll get Pike sat around there, you don't have to fish far out, if you just drop a, a bait just, just over the edge there, that's a good, a good, uh, a good place to start. Um, there's also some overhanging trees and um, you'll notice the camera light's just dipped a little bit and that's because it's in quite a shaded area. But again, that's another element of surprise for pike and they'll, uh, they'll, they'll just sit there waiting for shoals come past and, uh, and they'll be straight out and uh, taking one or two of those from there. In the background, we, uh, we, we mentioned the bridge, but um, it's a right old bridge that looks, uh, looks like a good, a good place to, uh, to fish. We won't be fishing in any of these pots. We might get back if we get time. We've actually got a peg marked out a bit higher up, so I'll see you up there. Um, as always, when you're walking up the canal side, it's always good to keep them um, looking out for a bit of watercraft. I've come between these two boats here, and I've seen a big shoal of roach fry. Uh, pike are quite clever, and um, it looks like we can't fish here, unfortunately, because of the proximity of the two boats together. Um, but you can bet there'll be a few pike lying, lying around there, just uh, waiting to have a strike. And I think if we waited here long enough, uh, we'd probably see some action. But unfortunately, it's a bit too dangerous to fish with our equipment, so we're going to have to move on, unfortunately. Um, we haven't quite got to us, Peg. But what we've uh, identified is a barge here that looks like it's kind of turned into a natural habitat. It looks like it's been here for some time and you can see he's got some trees growing on there and some plants on there. And it'd be very unlikely that that barge has moved um, over the last couple of months. Um, we were talking about man-made habitat and natural habitat. Well, it looks more natural if it hasn't moved for a couple of months and then you really are kind of guaranteed that there will be pike sat just under there. Um, there's a few prey fish knocking about in the water. Few, a, bit, a bit of shoal movement so that's always a good sign as well I think what we'll do is we'll just go to the other side of that badge and that's where we'll drop us first bait so we'll see you up there I hope I'm at the bank side now. Um, you saw me travelling up with the rods broken down as you normally would do when you're travelling light. But in, um, in the first episode we talked about the uh, danger of treble hooks. You'll see from the rig here that I haven't got any treble hooks on at this stage. I'm just about to put them on and I've travelled with no treble hooks on either. But um, I'll just show you what this rig look, looks like just as it is. I'm just about to uh, put the hook on now, the um, wire trace that we made up. 
and, um, and obviously I'm going to put on a dead bait. In this case, it's just a two to three inch roach, which will look very similar to what's in this uh, this swim at the moment, I suspect. Um, and I'll uh, I'll just show you. Th I'll just talk to you about the tactics that we're going to use and the setup. We've got the power gum on this rig set to about two feet. Um, you'll see that we've got um, some power gum to start. Then we've got a little bobber float. They're ideal those for midwater fishing, just bobbing around in the water, um, trying to make that dead fish look as natural as possible. Um, then we've got a split bullet, um, just just to give us some buoyancy on the float. Then we've got a float stop, um, and then obviously we've got a real um, heavy duty quick change um, system and a really well made wire trace of about 18, 19 inches down to a semi barbless treble. Remember what we talked about last time. The um, the barbed hook is the one that goes through the prey fish, and um, and the, they're all barbless um, on the outside, and that just helps us unhook unhook um, if we do manage to get a run. Here goes. Wish me luck. Well, we've got us um, first as first bait cast out now, and um, we're just bobbing around by this barge. It's really important that um, you make sure that the barge owner uh, is not getting upset by you know, casting equipment near, near obviously their homes in this case. Um, if you do see anybody on the barge, and obviously ask permission first of all before you start fishing. We have seen this chap on board, and uh, and, and he's quite fine with us as long as we don't hit his boat, and that's understandable. Now, just a little bit about the, um, the, the equipment that we're using here. We've got a two and a half pound um, test curve rod. We're running a bait runner with the bait runner on, very similar to carp angling, just in case we miss that action and at least the fight can, uh, can take line out there. We're not going to lose any equipment if we turn away. Um, I'll show you around the uh, equipment set up. We've got the rubber landing net um, all set up, ready to go. I'm obviously prepared for any unhooking as well. And then just behind the camera, we've got an unhook an, um, the unhooking mat system set up there, and I'll show you that as well. Um, but that's the first rod setting up. Uh, the next one's going to fish on the. We're fishing on the bottom with the next rod. We've got two rods going out, and um, and we're going to have a go at that. So I'll show you that one just as I have done this one. Right, I've got the cameraman watching the first setup for me, just just to make sure that we're not uh, we're not getting a run while I'm doing this for you. Um, but this is the second setup that um, that we use, and it's probably the most popular one to be fair that we use all season. Um, what we've got here is a lock slide, um, a lock slide float. We've used these from three or four seasons and have been absolutely fantastic, great for the application. Um, what 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 they do? It's a running it's um, it's running on a running lead lead system. Uh, again, very similar to carp fishing, barbel fishing. Um, we've got a, a buffer on there, a rubber buffer, just to stop that um, hitting against the uh, quick release. We're back on a, um, we're on a treble hook system this time, two hooks on there, and again we're about 18, 19 inch, um, 28 pounds, um, 28 pounds breaking strain, stranded, stranded um, pike trace wire. What we'll do is we'll load this up with, uh, with a, a bigger dead bait this time. Um, we'll cast it out. What we do is we just let the, the lead um, sink to the bottom and let the float naturally find its buoyancy. Really sensitive setup these, great for early striking and we know that's what we need to be doing when we're out there pike angling. Um, what, what I tend to do is I'll make the cast um, and then just let the bait runner off, let the line slack as I say and just let the float find its natural depth. Tighten up the line slightly then whack, uh, whack the bait runner back in again. And, uh, and I'll uh, show you that in action just as we've made the cast. Well, I've got my, my bait of fish on now, and in this case, it's a smelt. Um, some some of these smelts, pike can't resist them. It's, uh, some, some people say it's an actual drug for pike. We've done really well on them, and they seem to work really well. They're quite a cucumber smell to them, but pike seem to really like them. Um, just remember that nine times out of ten, pike will take um, a fish head first. So what you do is you hook your, your first hook near the head and then the second one goes into the bony bit of the tail. It just allows you to cast with the, with the bait fish still staying on there. Um, we've got that rod out, I said it earlier. I've got a cam the cameraman's watching that one. We don't want to be talking to the camera and then we get a, we get a run and end up with a deep up pike. So he's, uh, he's watching that one and I'm just about to cast this one out. Right, I'm just about to cast this out now. Um, you'll see me make the cast, you'll see me holding the line. I'll be keeping a tight line. And I'll wait for the buoyancy of the float to come up and then I'll tighten up and then just run the bait runner off um, getting ready.
there you go that's our first cast with a lock slide system they're really good they just look after themselves nothing too complicated massively sensitive and um, and if we get a bite with these floats they tend to react and you get little rings around the uh, around the the indicator part of the of the float before the actual pike strikes so if you're watching before you get the the, the, the float drifting away you'll get some indication of, um, of little rings appearing usually around the float and then it's just nice and simple it'll just disappear and then you'll do your, uh, your your early striking but simple setup works every time don't need to over complicate it i'm showing you two setups this afternoon and we're hoping they're going to pay off um, we've got about two hours of fishing i suspect left now the uh, and uh, and we'll just uh, just see if we can get one on the bank to show you right we've been here a little while now with the sun setting um, I don't think there's much time left, so I think what we're going to do is um, we're probably going to move up uh, probably to uh, about 100 yards, maybe get closer to a bridge or there's, uh, there's a little cutout that I'll show you. We're going to have the last sort of um, half an hour in there and um, hopefully we can, uh, we can get one on the bank to show you. This, um, this set up here, this bobber system, we've just changed the rods over and the, uh, the tactic that I'm using now is there's a little bit of undercurrent um, on the canal just drifting us under the bridge, so what I've decided to do you just bob the uh, the uh, the small roach it's suspended about 12 inches from the bottom of the floor and i'm just allowing it to drift naturally under that dark bridge there and um, if there's any pike shoulder up just at the sides of there they'll see that go past and because it's going through at a little bit of a tempo there's a chance that one of them might just come out and strike that so um, it's a good opportunity if you if you're fishing that system and there is any tow on the water then try and make the most of it and make it as natural as possible and that little roach now is just drifting through there nice and slow not much uh, not much life to it but um, it'll be a, a nice easy meal for, for a pike or that's what they'll be thinking so that's uh, just one of the uh, tactics that i use well, we've just had a couple of knots on the floor here um, we're not sure whether it's taken the bait but, uh, but we've had two knots on our bobber system floating under this bridge so we're uh, just going to give it another 20 or 30 seconds and see if there's any more action and then we're just going to reel it in and just check that we've got his bait on there. Well, I've just uh, reeled this bobber rig in, and then uh, the bait looks like it's intact. And we could have been a perch, maybe just uh, having a little go at it. It's only a small roach that we've got on there, but. Unfortunately, we've uh, we've not we've not had a, a take so far. So uh, there's probably about 10-15 minutes left, and I'm just going to try it at the far side of this bridge and use the same tactic and just uh, drift it along that back wall there. Stand by. out as we said earlier we've got the cameraman looking after the other rod and I'm just concentrating on this one and that's really important when you've got two rods going together you either need to bring them both close together and look after them if you're on your own or uh, if, if obviously if there's two of you and you're using one rod each and that's uh, nice and safe but it's important that you keep your eye on these floats we've got no other type of real bait indicator so the floats are our bait indi our indicator of a, of a run so we need to keep his eyes peeled Sure, whether you got that on camera, but that's um, one of the beauties of being out. Probably later on when it's quiet in the day, we've just had a couple of kingfishers fly by there. Um, you can see I'm quite close to this bridge now, and I can't see the other side of the towpath. Um, so just take take care when you've got these these big rods out that people are not coming round. And remember that there's cyclists on here, and they'll come round at a decent rate and not. So you've just got to be. Uh, uh, aware that you know you've got to keep keep yourself off the towpath if possible you don't want them colliding into you and you don't want your uh, equipment damaging so just be aware of that as well well that just about wraps up this episode of last cast um, we've had two rods out for a couple of hours now. It's a fairly new water to us, um, and we we uh, 
we've not been successful unfortunately but with, I, with any type of specimen fishing you're not going to catch every time you go um, we've enjoyed ourselves that's for sure we've had a real good time while we've been out there and i think while you're out there you're always learning and uh, and really that's the skill in, in in angling and it's a skill in pike fishing there's three or four things that bring it all together it could be tactics it could be the bait that you're using um, it could be uh, the location that you're in um, but the most important one is if the pike are not hungry they're not feeding then y y y you've not got a chance but as i said to you earlier it's all about learning while you're out there and the more times you're out there you'll see things a little bit differently you'll try things um, a little bit differently and you'll certainly uh, enjoy yourself while you're out there i certainly have um, and until next time i'll catch you on last cast bye for now